Hello students. Today we will learn about the various tests that can be used to assess the intelligence of a human being. The intelligence test can broadly be classified into two categories. Individual test and group intelligence test. Individual intelligence test it is administered on one individual at a time on the other hand group intelligence test is administered on more than one individual at a time since many individuals can be assessed at the same time the group intelligence test takes less time in assessing the individual's intelligence the individual intelligence test can further be classified into two categories the binet test and the wechsler scales the group intelligence test can be further classified into cognitive abilities test and the otis lennon school ability test the binet test this is how the timeline of binet test look like in the year 1904 the french government asked a psychologist named alfred binet to develop a method for identifying children who were unable to learn in a regular school the government wanted to shift these children to special schools to reduce the crowding in the regular schools in the year 1905 Binet and his student Theophile Simon developed the Binet Simon scale to meet the government's request. This test consisted of 30 questions. The Binet tests have been revised a number of times and these revisions are called Stanford Binet test because the revisions were made at Stanford University. In the year 1912 William Stern gave the concept of intelligence questioned The concept of mental age was given by Binet In the year 1916 came the first edition of Binet Simon scale The second edition came in the year 1937 The third edition came in the year 1973 in the year 1986 came the fourth edition and the fifth edition which is the latest edition came in the year 2003 the term intelligence question is equal to a person's mental age divided by chronological age multiplied by 100 Mental age refers to an individual's level of mental development as compared to others. Let us study Stanford Binet scale 5th edition in more detail. This test is also called SB5. It can be administered It can be administered to individuals of 2 years of age through adulthood this test can be administered by a pro trained professional preferably a psychologist this edition is a test of intelligence and cognition it analyzes five aspects of cognitive ability and two aspects of intelligence The first aspect of cognition is fluid reasoning. Fluid reasoning is related to abstract thinking. Next aspect is knowledge. Knowledge is related to the conceptual information that the individual has. Quantitative reasoning is related to mathematical skills. visual spatial reasoning 
is understanding of visual forms and spatial layouts. Working memory is related to recalling of new information. The two aspects of intelligence are verbal intelligence and non-verbal intelligence. This is the SB5 classification. If the IQ score obtained after administering the intelligence test is between 145 and 160, then the individual is said to be very gifted. On the other hand, if the score is between 40 and 54, then the individual is said to be moderately impaired or delayed. The Weschler Scales David Weschler, who was a psychologist, developed the Weschler Scales. There are three types of Weschler Scales. The first is the Weschler Preschool and primary scale of intelligence. Fourth edition. It is administered to children from two years and six months of age to seven years and seven months of age. The second scale, which is Vesher Intelligence Scale for Children, fourth edition, is administered on children from six years of age to 16 years of age. The third scale is for adults from 16 years of age to 19 years of age. These are the abbreviations for each scale. WPPSI4, WISC4, WAIS4. WPPSI4 has 14 subtests. Out of these 14 subtests, some are core subtests and some are supplementary subtests. The rest are the optional subtests. The core subtests are used to measure verbal IQ, performance IQ, and full scale IQ. The supplementary subtests are used in place of core subtests when a particular core subtest is inappropriate for the children. Optional subtests provide additional information about cognitive functioning but can't be used to replace the core subtests. WISC4 and WAIS4 have 15 subtests each out or of these 15 subtests 10 are core subtests and 5 are supplementary subtests the core subtests are used to measure four index scores and full scale iq the supplementary subtests are used if a core subtest can't be used for a particular child according to wisc 5 IQ classification, the individuals falling in the IQ range of 130 and above are extremely high in intelligence. If IQ is 69 or below 69, then the individual's intelligence is said to be extremely low. Here, if the IQ score is equal to 130 and above, then the individual has a very superior intelligence. If the IQ score is 69 and below, then the individual is extremely low in intelligence. This classification is for WAIS4 and WPPSI4 scales. Now let's move on to cognitive abilities test which is a classification of group intelligence test.
the cognitive abilities test was first published in the year 1954 and was called large thorndike intelligence test it was called by this name because this test was developed by robert l thorndike and irving large seventh edition is the most recent edition of this test this test is administered to a group of individuals it is used for assessment of children grade each level of this test consists of three test batteries namely verbal items quantitative items and non verbal items otis lennon's cool ability test this test is a group administered test and it is for age group from kindergarten to 12th grade this test it administered online or using a pencil and paper this test yields verbal and non verbal scores from which a total score is derived which is called a school ability index the various test components are the verbal components are verbal comprehension following directions antonyms sentence completion sentence arrangement and so on some of the non verbal test components are pictorial reasoning picture classification picture analogies picture series and so on interpretation of scores now the question is how a teacher should interpret the iq scores there are some cautions that a teacher must take while interpreting the scores of intelligence test like a hammer which can be used to build a table or break a glass a physiologic a psychological test can be used for the benefit of the students and teacher or they can be misused suppose a student's iq is 80 according to the intelligence test the teacher should not think that it is useless teaching him teacher should keep in mind that an iq test measures the current performance only it doesn't mean that student intelligence can't be increased with appropriate environment experiences the intelligence of the student can be improved IQ test should not be considered as the sole characteristic of students competence for example along with intelligence test other tests like achievement test aptitude test etc should be used before making decisions about the students competence there are various domains of intelligence like verbal intelligence non verbal intelligence etc the strengths and weaknesses in every domain of intelligence should be considered only the iq scores are not sufficient for determining the intelligence of the students thus a teacher should carefully interpret the iq scores if you like my video please hit the like button and share it with your friends Please subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thank you.